I'm Lambert Chow. Uh, this is Camila Taylor, my colleague. We work, at, work in the software technology department at Wolfram Research. And uh, we are very excited to bring you uh, some new features at Mathematica we're bringing into Mathematica. Robots, Legos, and Mathematica. So uh, as we all know, technology is entering every aspect of our lives, and more and more, more of our lives are going into the virtual world. I'd like to say what we're doing with this project here is we're bringing Mathematica back into the physical world. So let's take a, let's just jump right in and start off. We'll do a real world application slash science. We're gonna do edge detection. Or, there you go. So, I'm gonna send that robot to the edge over there. It's gotta figure out that there's the edge there and it's gonna stop. So how are we gonna solve this little simple problem? Pretty simple for us to do, right? So I'm gonna write this little function here called don't fall. And all it does is, you know, here this is just motor stuff. It just tells it to stop. And then this the condition is that this distance that we give it, it, what we have there on that robot is two motors that you can see up on that screen there. Maybe we can show them. Two motors. And then up front there, those two little eyes you see, there actually is an ultrasonic sensor. It measures distance away from, from the sensor. So when it's pointing down and the ground's right in, in front of it, it's going to give a small value. Uh, six centimeters or whatever, you know. And when it's greater than 10, then he knows it's at an edge, it's got to start breaking. So what we're going to do is we're going to start that data stream from that sensor, cooked up to port one, and we do a little dynamic, and maybe... You validate, don't fall. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that might, that might have put a damper on this thing. All right, <laughs> this demo would be called Cliff Jumper. <laughs> All right, so, so right now I think this is okay, all right? And we have this dynamic there, and that's basically checking that everything's okay. So this that last thing is go, and it's gonna send it to the edge, and we'll see what happens, and I'm not gonna even look. There you go. All right, stop. You didn't fall. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All righty, so let's do a little more. Let's take it to the next level. How, what, what's the robot actually seeing? And so uh, we can actually do live visualization, live telemetry in a way. We set up, uh, we record the distance as it goes, and we can do a live plot of it, and to me, we could move it to the edge. You see, it sees the edge. Live plot, come back, and that's what it's seeing, and that's what's triggering it to, to stop and, and turn off its motors. Okay, so that sort of gives you an idea of what we can, what we can do. So let's think about this a little more in depth. So what's really going on here? What's in a robot? This little Mindstorm, Lego Mindstorm kit is a pretty cool kit for 300 bucks. You get all the basic functionality of a robot. You get sensors for measuring data from the physical world. You get motors that actually you can control, actuators, lights, speakers. You get a little microcontroller here. And now we're bringing Mathematica into the loop. And what we're gonna do is we got this whole loop going on and Mathematica is gonna remotely control that robot. And so, Think about what has to happen for this to, ha to work though. You gotta keep measuring data. We saw that plot it kept going, right? And then the motor, you gotta keep, keep it in the loop and tell it, you know, do this now, do that later, do this now, all that. And Mathematica handles all that for you. What functionality do we have? Well, here's the main functions. Current robot data, that will grab data from whatever sensor you hook up to it. And it abstracts all the difficulty away from you. You just immediately get the data it streams it for you, you don't have to do anything about it. Do action is what you use to control the motors. And then this is all glued together by dynamic, which is, uh, if you're into computer speak, is, is our event handler. Uh, it's a function already in Mathematica for, for quite a while. And so basically what you're doing is all you gotta do is plug current robot data into dynamic and tell it to do something based on something. And current robot data handles the acquisition loop for you. And it just keeps piping the data. So if you think about it, it's more like a real world situation. You're driving home now from this conference. You're busy thinking about what a cool time, all the cool people you met, what stuff you learned at this conference. You're not constantly asking yourself, am I about to drive off a cliff? Am I about to drive off a cliff? Am I about to drive off a cliff, okay? So we're handling all that for you. You only react when you know, hey, there's a cliff coming up. I might want to slow down. Okay, so this is what we can do. And think about the applications here. I mean, um, education, for example, when you're teaching in the classroom, robotics is a good way to learn computer science. 
And do you really want your students focusing on some you know, for loops, while loops, acquisition loops, threading, or do you want them to focus on just the logical decisions, what you have to do? Um, also, in the academic research, we handle all this for you. You might say, hey, wait a minute, this function it has some parameters you can put in. It has automatic parameters. You're saying, I mean, this robot is completely configurable. How do we handle that? Well, we set, you have this functionality for you to set it up. You configure it once, and you can forget about it. Mathematica remembers until you reset it. Um, now, compare this to traditional code, and you get an idea of what we, I mean, that is very simple code, and okay, so look at how much this code is. I mean, it's line returns, but there's still a lot of loops and everything, and all that. We'll actually see this. We'll actually implement this later on, and it'll be very short and sweet. So, and we can do all this building on the technology we already developed for version 8 about acquiring and so forth, and this is the next logical step, bringing that back into the real world. All right, so next up, we're going to do follow the line, which is a very basic uh, education type experiment that, you know, is very ethical. And Camille's going to set you up for that. Okay, so as I said, this is a pretty classic uh, beginning, beginning robotics problem. And what we'll have, if you want to show, so we start off, we have, a, we have some sort of track. We have a black line against a white background, which you can see on the screen right. here, right? Okay. And, okay. and, now, and now what we want to do is we want to sample, we want, we want to know what black is. So we have a color sensor. Uh, or, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Sorry. we have a light, yeah, we have a light sensor at the bottom. And we're going to place it on the track. And we start, we start off by sampling, sampling black, the black level. And then the white reading. And we just write a really simple, a really simple program to follow the line. Start up a data stream and put the program into dynamic. And now here you can see, if you look at the code, it's really just uh, trying to stay to the right of the black line. So it turns towards the line when it sees it, it reverses direction, and then it starts turning to it again. And traditionally, you actually have to do a fair amount of setting up of loops to try to figure out what it is. And with Mathematica, we can just sort of jump into what is the logic? What do we need with one light sensor to be able to solve this problem without having to worry about a lot of the other setup? OK, so I'm probably going to stop this. It can finish, press this. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> we can see. Can you select it? Okay. All right. So we'll stop that. Stop data stream. Okay. Okay. So so far we've shown we've shown two two really two really simple basic uh, sort of uh, intro intro uh, programs. But what else can we bring in? Like, what advantage do we get from using Mathematica? Well, now that we now that we have access to this robot and all the data it gets, it gets, uh, we can now we can we can now make use of some of Mathematica's inbuilt features. So uh, the this sensor here with the light, this is a color sensor. We're going to start streaming from the color sensor, and if we put that in a dynamic, you sort of see these. You see, you see basically like the raw data of what, what we get from the sensor. All right, that's not really very helpful. So I'm going to make a graphic. And now we've, we've matched the, the numbers with the bins. So the sensor basically has 18 bins that it thinks colors are. And when we hold a color up in front of it, Thank you. hopefully, kind of. It's going to t it's going to match it with what color, so we can see it's purple and it's matched. It's put it into the purple bin, and we have that highlighted. Uh, okay, so well, let's do a little bit more. We're going to use Mathematica's speak function. Yellow. Yeah. <laughs> yellow. Hey, yellow. <laughs> purple. It's British. <laughs> White. Black. And this is all uh, you can imagine if I if I were doing this in C, 
I'd have to, projector. I'd actually have to do coding to show this visualization yeah. and then to hook that into actually saying these words. And all of this comes for free completely once we hook this into Mathematica. So, all right. All right, we'll do some more, some more viz. Uh, we also have a compass sensor hooked up here. And uh, we'll start streaming from the compass sensor. And again, we can see what this raw data looks like. So if you spin it around, zero is supposed to be true north. We'll see if it's actually correct. What does it think north is? Not bad. North is that way. Yeah. So and everything else is relative to what it believes true north is. All right, again, not very useful. But if we put in a little function to map this into headings, now we can actually visualize the direction it is like on a compass. Oh, this is simple to do with a few lines of code. Yeah, and this is really simple. Again, I just, uh, I just hooked in with the graphics, and uh, we're like really quickly, we, we, can, uh, we can visualize that data. OK, so Lambert's going to show you even more Mathematica functionality that we can hook into. So basically what we've been trying to show is we have this robotics functionality. We can grab data, we can control it, but then you get the full Mathematica platform behind you, do visualizations of everything. And uh, we also have other stuff, like uh, since Mathematica version 6, we've been able to grab you know, game pads and take data from it, grab you know, wh wh whatever the joystick value is. And I always believe you know, you're an engineer, you build a car, you got to get to drive it for fun. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I, this is all for readability, which basically the do action functions are there. There's a motor function. I'm building a differential drive motor. There's a stop function for a brake and immersion. It's basically an e-brake. You got acceleration, which you know powers the the both wheels at the same amount. You got steering, which is a differential drive, so it flips one of the wheels to go backwards, and the other one to go forwards to get it to turn in in, in place. And then wh what it's take doing is the core of this is the control of state function reading, reading from this Logitech controller, and you're going to get the data values from it, and that from based on that it'll control it. So again, we hook up the dynamic. We say the, the core of this is this drive function. Basically, you give it the acceleration and the steering, and then you got a little calibration you got to do with the minimum power because this, these uh, game pads aren't so linear. There's a big jump in, in data, so it's really for thresholding a little. And then what you do is hook it up to the good old faithful dynamic again, and then you got your event handler, and here we go. Power. Great, 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 <laughs> No! And, whoop! There we go. Well, it's gone. <laughs> Maybe we should have hooked up the clip to the clip demo with this yep. one. <laughs> All right, how bad is it? Uh, not too bad. Yeah, I guess we're missing a part. Yeah. And you know what went wrong there? User error. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think Thank that's you. maybe the main last one. Yeah, that e break I was telling you about, I forgot to evaluate it. Oh, oh. I was hitting it for dear life. Whoopsie. So the lesson here is always have a break function. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's low. Uh, All right, I'm going to have to restart everything, right? Uh, we, I think we can move to the. Yeah. Maybe move to the next one. Sure. While you start out. We can do this after, after yeah. everything. <laughs> you get to see the fun. All right, so basically what that'll do is differential drive, and you can see you can hook it up to, to the thing, and if there wasn't user error, that, that e-brake would actually work, and it would stop it from going off the table. All righty, so now what we're going to do is uh, we had our fun, so what we're going to segue into is uh, basically a little project that is basically a small fraction of what Camille has been working on during grad school, and she'll tell you a bit about that. And it basically leads into what we think you can easily do with, with prototyping a Mathematica in your academic research or whatever. All right, so so far we've sort of shown you know, some, ni some nice little demos, but we can also use this in research. And so this, this demo is actually a small portion of, my, uh, of, uh, of something I did in grad school. And basically we have an infrared sensor and a beacon. And the sensor can tell, well, I'll just evaluate this. Not Hopefully again. we don't have another one going off. Basically it follows the infrared sensor. Yeah, it basically follows the, the infrared sensor and tries to go towards it. How far 
Oh, oh, pretty far. I'm actually going to just show, put this on the ground. Well, you know. And now we can see this a lot, a lot better if you're in the front, and it can go towards it. But you notice that what's cool is we got a little MacBook Air hooked up there. It's completely autonomous. It has nothing to do with this presentation computer. That Mac is on there controlling things, and you program in some computer vision stuff, and it just goes. Right. And so now we have an autonomous robot. We've, we've just slapped this little air on there, and we have a robot that goes and is being powered by Mathematica. OK. And, uh, and here is a, uh, here, so the code that we showed before, uh, the, the long code, that was actually the equivalent, uh, the equivalent C code to the code that was running here, powering this. It's, a, it's really interesting to see like how, how we can make a nice little short code, a short, short uh, you know, one right. or two line code. So this is what we promised to implement all of this and we did it like this, pretty short. Yeah. That's because we did all the work for you. <laughs> all right, so um, sort of a little finale. You can, with this new functionality, what can you do? You can bring existing code into the real world. A lot of you probably know of uh, Herbert Kosiemba's Cube Explorer, his uh, algorithm for solving the Rubik's Cube, one of the better algorithms out there. And what Kahim did, Kahim Shankarwala, our intern, is he just took the existing package off the internet. He took our new robotics functionality, built this little twisted tilter robot that's, you know, specked out on the internet. We modified a little bit. and. Here we go. So, okay, I'll admit we stacked the deck here. It's we only we put a short. A few so minutes. it should only take a couple minutes. But it, this is really powerful because again, this is a Mathematica package that we found online, and we're able to hook it into, or Fahim was able to hook it into, uh, the robotics, uh, the robotics code that we've implemented. And he he actually this wasn't even necessarily code that he'd worked on. So he was able to take our code, take this package, and connect them together. All right, so we're pretty excited about this. Um, so the question is, what are you guys going to do about it next? <laughs> Bad pun, sorry. Well, thank you all for your time. Thanks. <laughs>